most people, when they get to a high level of playing, there's a certain sort of woodshed period. There's a period where you're, you know, you're good and you're doing, you know, you're doing well, but then you go, you know what, I really need to take it up a notch. And maybe it happens several <clears throat> times in your life. Did you have any, for, like for me, it was when I went to Musicians Institute mm -hmm. and I spent that year there, changed my life and my playing. Did you have any time like that in your early musical life where you really hunger down and, and, and really shed? It was probably that year I spent in a Turkish prison. <laughs> and uh, it was amazing. They, you know, they really... you, gotta, you can't tape the hashish to the torso. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you got to do it to the, to the pants. Right, right, right. <laughs> Man, that's a rookie uh, mistake. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, well, oh, yeah but, but there was a benefit. You learn. Yep. You learn. But no, early on, yeah, I think that that, that woodshedding thing took place while I was uh, doing those... Uh, those bar band things, you know. Were you, five, were, six were you graduated a week. from college then? Had you, had, all, had you left school by that yeah, point? Yeah, well, I, I had, uh, I went to, uh, yeah, I was at university for three years. Like the middle of the third year, I realized that oh, this is completely w a waste of time. Why, why was it a waste of time for you? I wasn't learning anything. You knew what you wanted to do. Yeah. You knew the skills you needed. By, by that point, yeah. All right. But I was taking, but I was uh, uh, majoring in music and uh, it was a complete waste of time. Really? I wasn't going to learn anything there. No. What I, did you feel you needed to do? Like, like I'm wasting my time here. I need to be doing this to to have the career I, just I needed, want. I just needed to be playing be all play. the time. Yeah, because yeah. I was when I was when I was at, at school, I was playing, uh, doing weekends, doing Friday and Saturday, a steady Friday Saturday gig in Seattle down in Pioneer Square, with a couple of my brothers actually in their band. But uh, I realized, no, that that's what I need to do. I need to be yeah. doing that, and I need to be doing more of it. That was your practical training. Yeah, yeah. I need, yeah. To, I need to be doing more of that. Not so necessarily arranging bot corrals and, just, right, you know, right. these kind of so, things. So that's when I, I, you know, started up with uh, with some other guys with, uh, you know, the bar band thing. And and that was tr fantastic training because you got to do – it's it's funny. The young kids that have never done it can't imagine doing – six nights a week, four sets, you know, they're yeah. barely able to do one set down at Tootsie's or something. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, you're going to do four sets and you're going to do it every night yep. for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know, you're going to do it. And it was great training though. Yeah. And, and I feel bad for the, for, for the younger people because there, there's none of that anymore. Yeah. You can't do it. You have to scramble to try to play once a week, you right. know, but, but back then, you're, if you were in a decent band, you had a booking agent, and you're playing lounges five, six nights a week, and that was great training. Did you do? What you said that's sort of your your shed time. So, what were you working on outside of all those gigs? Because those gigs were giving you a certain level of training. You're you're working yeah, on your yeah. time, your groove, and uh, and arrangements and all that. But then you you probably were practicing on your own. I was playing. Yeah, I play all day, playing all day long, working on stuff. And that what worked for me was uh, I would just, I got every record of cool bands that I could manage and would just learn them inside out. Every note, the nuance of every note, I'd break it down to to not just the notes and then it's the tone of those notes and then it's like even the length of those notes. So some notes are just a little bit shorter. Oh, that one was a little longer. And I'm talking about like an absolute replication of what they're doing, you know, yeah. whether whether it was... You know, Tower of Power and learning Rocco stuff, or Larry Graham, or or Zeppelin. I was a big Zeppelin fan early yeah. on. You know, or or Return to Forever and learning all that stuff. You it's know, pretty good bass players in those bands. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's and learning Return to Forever stuff was a, was a, really a challenge, especially with a record player, yeah. because you have to keep going back and back yeah. and back. And you know, we got to learn. You know, it's like you know, you learning that. It's like. Man, it took a while, yeah. but but I was just doing that. I just kept. I just needed more input. So I just, every band I could find, just learning the music. 